Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the US. And I'm here to bring you my live paper crafting class. I'm very excited. I have a couple things. I'm gonna do a technique, actually a couple of techniques with the same products, and then I'm going to show you a fun fold card. So we've got a lot jam packed into today's class. Welcome to all of you. Um, I do want to let you know that Trisha couldn't be here today. And I thought I had messaged Lisa, who usually does the moderation on Facebook, to see if she could come over to YouTube. So if you're getting that right now, if you're getting the message right now, Lisa, <laughs> wondering if you can hop over there, because those are the comments that I can't actually respond to later on. If you can't, that's fine. So sorry that um, if I forgot to text, I thought I wrote up the text and then, um, I don't know, maybe I forgot to send it. But I'm just going to pretend I'm on my own unless I see Lisa's name pop up. <laughs> but welcome, everybody. It's so fun to see you chime in before the live start. I could see the YouTube comments rolling in. Now I'm seeing some on Facebook, which is great. Hi, Joanne from Facebook. Yay. <laughs> All right, we have got a, a fun one today. It's March 8th, 2023 um, at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm coming to you live. So if, 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 if you um, are watching this at a different time, let's say it's later on in the day, or let's say it's a totally different day, that means that you are commenting in the after live section. Commenting is awesome because I get to know you and it's fun when I can get to know people who are viewing my videos. So please join in the commenting, ask questions, that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm just reading comments, that's why I'm laughing, sorry. It's fun to, fun to see what you guys are writing. But yes, if you are commenting, you're gonna get entered into a prize drawing. Now, if, <laughs> if by chance Lisa doesn't get over to YouTube, um, and I'm stranded. I'll do a prize drawing afterwards, but we will do a prize drawing. Okay, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, let's see, we are going to share the Flying Seagull Fun Fold. And this is a fold that my upline um, put together and shared recently. I have a link to her blog post in the description of my YouTube video right now. And after I'm done being live, I can transfer it over to the, uh, to the Facebook. But um, it's really cool. It actually looks like a flying seagull when, um, when it's open. So I love the name that she came up with it came up with for it. We're going to be using the By the Bay uh, suite of products. Not everything in the suite. I am going to introduce you to the suite. In fact, let's just do that right now. This is the suite. It's uh, featured in the mini catalog for the January through April 2023 products on pages 22 and 23. And you can see the gorgeousness of this suite. I won't be using the dies and I won't be using the pearls or the ribbon. I know, weird, right? Because <laughs> they're all so pretty. But um, I am, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to be using the stamp set. I need water. <clears throat> and the paper. Oh my goodness. It's so funny too, because I had like two cups of water already today. So I'm not sure why I'm hoarse. It's winter here in Minnesota. Maybe that's it. But you can see very um, awesome products. And these are them in person. We have the flat back adhesive pearls or flat adhesive back pearls. We have the dies. Again, I won't be using the things that I'm showing you right now. Look at lots of coordinating fun dies. And um, let's see here. What is that? Oh, that's for something else. And then <laughs> we won't be using this variegated ribbon, which is in balmy blue. Super pretty, but we will be using the stamp set. This is Seaside Bay. Um, we'll be using like a uh, couple sentiments on here. Actually, three of them I use on all my samples. And then a lot of the stamps because we're going to be using a technique. And then I've got the beautiful paper. And the paper is usually like the star of a suite, right? So you can see it's specialty paper. And the reason why I say specialty is because it is not just flat matte designs. We have um, some foiling on it. We have gold foiling on some, and then we have pearlized foiling on others. This is not all that you get. You actually get four times this much. So you get 48 sheets. These are the 12 different des double-sided designs. So again, multiply that by four, you're gonna get 48 sheets. And then you can see other designs on this side. They're not um, foiled on this side, but um, still really pretty images. Let me just flip through them quickly. So we're gonna be using the top four sheets for the cards that I'm gonna share today. And I've already got my stamps set aside. 
we're going to walk through cutting first and then I'm going to do the demonstration of the um, techniques and then we'll come back to assembling the card. Aloha in Hawaii. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so let's bring up the supply sheet and we're going to transfer you guys all over to my computer, my desktop. Um, I'm going to shrink my head a little bit for this so you can read everything. There we go. Okay, so this is the PDF that you will be able to print off um, when the live is done. And actually, this blog post today, because we are hooked up to a blog hop with the other um, real creative people in the um, all-star video class bundle group that I'm in, um, we're going to be hooked up with a blog hop. That means when you visit my blog post at 3 p.m. Central Time, which is four hours after now, um, you will be able to click on the link that's in the description in the video, again, 3 p.m. Central Time, and you'll be able to follow the blog hop and see what all these other demonstrators have created with this suite. You can see a close-up of the, um, the birdie. Um, hang on. I know the name of it. It's a sandpiper. <laughs> I had to I had to scoot down and look at my uh, little tabs across the top, as you can see, because I had to Google what kind of bird is this? It's a sandpiper. Um, you can also see the cards, um, all four of them unfolded in that other photo. Those are the measurements. And yay for Rachel. She remembered to bring some metric measurements in. So <laughs> yay. All right. We've got the basic white thick cardstock. We have some coordinating cardstock for a strip for the sentiment. And I did see Lisa's name pop through. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for getting onto YouTube for me. And then we've also got um, the designer paper, fine shimmer paper, which is so pretty. I wish they made fine shimmer paper in every single color. It's gorgeous. And then we've also got um, some gold trim. The gold trim is a new ribbon that has been um, released in the online exclusives this month. You can see all the supplies I'm using, lots of inks. Now you don't have to get all of these things if you wanna make these cards. You, you can use less colors than what I'm using or you can just make one of the um, styles that I've got. But there you go, you'll be able to print that off later on. Um, let's see, yes, glad you're here, Lisa. Eileen um, uh, just chimed in, glad you're here, yay. We are so glad that you're here. Okay, so I'm gonna um, walk through some cutting and we're going to start with the designer paper. Let's do that. So the By the Bay designer paper, if you have, um, if you have a, an up and a down on your designer paper, like this one here, we've got swooshes going horizontally, then you might not want to use this paper in the same um, sections on the outer pieces. So you might have to pull in something else or flip it over. So let's flip this one over and see what we have. Well, this one's more like random. You could probably twist and turn it in any direction. So I think for this card, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it at four inches here. And then I'm going to cut it at four inches again. Now, this is going to be my main layer, but these two pieces, again, look at what would happen here. I would have swooshes going vertically instead. But if we flip it over, we could totally use the kind of all over the place random patterns here. So for the other pieces, I'm gonna need a piece that is two inches by four. Hey, look at that, it worked. So there's your two by four piece, and I'm just gonna make sure I'm doing this right here. By the Bay Designer Paper, two by four, yes. And then the other one is already two inches also, and we're just gonna trim that. And you know what, I wanna include a crab on that one. So we're gonna trim that right here. So now we have our designer paper for the front of our card. Okay, now if we were doing um, this design, let's see here, not that one. If we were doing a design that was um, more like, gosh, again, random, you could use both um, both pieces. Now in the, in the one here, so we're gonna put this one together now. In the one here, I want this to be the focal point in the middle of the card, so I'm gonna cut at four inches here. This is six by six designer paper, by the way. <laughs> I'm glad you made it, Jackie. She got here late, but she made it, yay. And then I'm gonna turn in this direction and cut it again. And now see these fish? They do fit there, like I could put them there if I want to, or I could put them over here. 
And then these, see, they still flow. So you see how we could still use the front side of this? So I'm going to cut here. And I think that's what I'm using. Hang on, I'm going to peek. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to cut these two right now, but you'll see the finished samples later on. But now you can kind of see how that works. So either way, this works, doesn't it? Okay. All right, for the shimmer paper, we want it to be a little bit narrower. And I've already cut it down. Um, the shimmer paper comes in a pack of three colors, okay? So we have Fresh Freesia, Soft Succulent, and Gold. And the Soft Succulent, I have found, looks really close to Pool Party sometimes, too. I know, strange, right? Oh, that's really glaring off of there, isn't it? It's gorgeous stuff, you guys. So pretty. See that fine shimmer in the paper? So for our fine shimmer, we just need pieces that are one and a half by four inches. So gold for one card and the soft succulent for the other. And we'll be embossing those. So I'm going to set those aside. Now let's bring in the cardstock. Oh, you know what? Let's do this too. Let's grab our strips. These are our strips for our sentiment pieces and they measure just under an inch and it depends on your sentiment. Okay, so if you're going to do um, a, a, a taller sentiment or whatever, you probably want to make this thicker. But um, it will be posted on my blog by f uh, not 5, um, but 3 p.m. Sorry, Lisa, I just caught that. 3 p.m. Central Time today. And then we've got um, four and a quarter inches in this direction. Okay, so seven eighths of an inch or just under an inch by four and a quarter. And now we've got our basic weight. So we want to cut that down. I've got two sheets here. And this is the thick. And the reason why, oops, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. I accidentally clicked on your comment though. So now I got to find it and unclick it or it's going to be sitting up there the whole time. Oh my gosh, Rachel. See, this is what happens. Okay, I might have to keep scrolling. But the reason why I have two sheets of cardstock is because the card, ha uh, it takes some extra for, there it is, I see it. Sorry, Sheila. <laughs> um, it takes some extra on the front. Um, and the front piece is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then we need um, some pieces that wing out or make the seagull uh, shape, right? This is what I want to click there. Now I can see the comments again. <laughs> so when we cut this, you'll notice that you'll just need to grab in a, a small portion of another piece of basic white. So we're going to score both of these at the same time, just to make it quicker. We're going to score at two and a quarter inches. And I'm just using my gray blade. I've got my paper um, lined up so it's hitting real flush at the top here. And I'm looking at the left edge of my trimmer. I've lined it up to the two and a quarter inch mark. And then I'm going to go to the four inch mark. And again, metric measurements are on that sheet. So you can follow the metric and it will fit into the um, A4 size envelopes. Yay. Okay. And this is at four, uh, six and a quarter. And then it gets cut at eight and three eighths. Measurements are slightly different than what Susan shared. Um, the reason why is because I wanted to just go right to the edge. Um, so when you do eight and three eighths, there is a risk of having your cardstock seep out. <laughs> and you'll see what I mean when we put it together. So we're not going to go exactly to three and three eighths, which is right here. We're going to go in between so the 16th inch before and the 8 and 3 eighths, we're just going to go in between. So we're just going to go back a little bit from the 8 and 3 eighths. Hopefully you can see that in the screen. And we're going to slice. Now we're going to cut this in half at 4 and a quarter, and we've got our two pieces. So instead of having to do these each separately, 4 and a quarter by 8 and 3 eighths, you can do them both at the same time, score them together, and then cut. Now you see what I'm left with? I'm only left with this small strip. Oops, now we're way too close. I'm only left with this small strip, and that's going to be great for our um, scrap pieces that we're going to be uh, coloring and all that stuff. So I'm going to keep that. But on this one, I do want to cut a piece that is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay, so I've got now, see, and that's you only use like a small portion of that extra sheet. 
Now we have the three main panels for our card ready to go. Okay, let's set those aside. Let us bring in the stamps now. Yay! All right, and I wanna show you this really quickly. Um, this is the difference between metric and imperial. You see this, you guys? Oops, I have to trim this one down a little bit more. So we're gonna pull that one out. So you can see there's a difference in size because the envelopes are, um, uh, well, they're here. I'll just show you. This is the envelope for, um, for imperial. And then the metric, I think I have that. I think I have one. I think this is it. If it's not, it's close enough. So you can see taller, skinnier, wider, shorter. So you have to have completely different measurements. It's very confusing. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can use that, those of you that live outside the areas where we use Imperial. Okay, let's bring in our scrap paper now, um, which I just set in a weird spot. Here it is. And we're gonna do some stamping. We're gonna do some stamping with daubers. Yay for daubers. These are my new, uh, this is my new dauber case, I should say. I got it from the Country Hive. You know the Country Hive that does the awesome adhesive caddy and the re-inker holders that I've shared in the past, um, all kinds of goodies they have. This is their new product. It's, it's a dauber holder. So it's their storage case. Sponge dauber storage case is what it's called. And you can even print off a little sheet that you can color code so that if you want to store your daubers upside down like I do so I can just poke in and grab oops poke in and grab then you can do that okay so there's my little dauber I have labeled it I have a new labeler that I got for Christmas and that is in my favorite things if you're curious about getting a labeler you can go to my blog and you can click on the menu under shop and choose my favorite things. And then you can see not only that labeler, but you can see this case there too and get linked to it. It's also in the description of the video. But for a dauber, all you have to do is stick your finger in there and it picks it up and you're ready to go. I'm gonna use the blushing bride color. Why blushing bride, Rachel? That's not even listed in the colors of the paper. Well, because on the paper, um, you can kind of see a little hint of two different pinks. I'm going to zoom in here. Um, two different pinks are kind of in there. One's cooler and one's warmer. And I'm seeing a touch of the cooler pink. Now I'm not pairing this one up with the finished card that we're going to do, but you're going to see it because one of the finished cards that I have did it in this color combo. So we're going to take our, um, um, oops, no, we're not using, we're not using Blushing Bride ink. We're using Blushing Bride cardstock. Okay, we're going to go to Poppy Parade, Rachel. Poppy Parade. There it is in my brights column. Here's my brights. So this is my Poppy Parade. Yay, I found it. See how easy that is? Okay, now we're going <laughs> to, you guys didn't even see it because I'm zoomed in too far. So basically, I just looked at my chart up here, and this is, my regals, my subtles, my brights, my um, neutrals. And I went to that one right there, which coordinates with that hole. Okay, so we're gonna take our dauber and we're gonna pop up and down on top of the pad to pick up the ink. And then we're going to sponge directly onto the stamp. This is the little crab guy. So we're gonna sponge Poppy Parade ink all over. And in fact, I probably wouldn't even have to sponge this. I could probably just go like this because that is the first color. And then I'm gonna grab my Cherry Cobbler. This is where the dauber really is important because the dauber is now gonna add some darkness around the edges. If I were to stamp it just like this, that is my crab, okay? He's kind of got a little warmish red tint to him, kind of like the paper pumpkin kits. So I'm going to ink it up again in Poppy Parade and this time I'm going to come in with my dauber, my sponge dauber, and I'm going to add some darkness to those tiny little legs. See that? Are these guys arachnids? I think they are. 
I think they're related to the spiders. I'm going around, I'm getting the claw area a bit. So now you can see on the stamp where I've added some dark, darker colors. I'm just gonna breathe moist air onto uh, the surface of the stamp again to make sure that all that ink is, is wet and ready to stamp. And then I'm gonna stamp it down. And now you can see the difference between the two crafts. I have this brighter red in the middle and then I have the darker red on the outside edges. We're gonna close up these two pads. Actually, this one here will get inked with the word thank you. So we might as well do that now. Did you notice my jewelry is um, um, by the bay related? <laughs> what is the company? The company is called The Country Hive. Um, so thecountryhive.com if you wanted to look for it right now, okay? So there we have our thank you sentiment. There we have our crab. That's for one of the cards. Now, the crab is not completely done yet, and you'll probably want to do this while the ink is nice and fresh. So I'm going to close these up. Make sure they're super closed. Set those aside, and I'm going to bring in my Wink of Stella pen now. Zooming in just a tad. Sorry, we are kind of far away from this guy. So the Wink of Stella can act like a blender pen. You guys know what blender pens are, right? Where you take and you can kind of bring color in from the side and do like a watercoloring type thing. Okay, I just saw somebody say that the YouTube is frozen. Um, I'm gonna go over here and click and it looks like it's still, oh no. <laughs> is it really frozen? Oh, moved over from frozen YouTube. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, well, what I might have to do then is take the one that we're recording on Facebook and upload it to YouTube later on. At least it's working on YouTube, right? Okay, yes, Wink of Stella. So we're going to come in now and we're going to use it as a little paintbrush like this. And what it's doing is the same thing that a blender pen does, is it's drawing the color from the the sides from the stamped image the outline areas and the shaded in areas and it is coloring it in so you can see the difference between the two sides already see that one is colored in and one isn't quite and with the wink of stella acting as the paintbrush i'm so sorry about the internet you guys hopefully those of you on youtube will come back next week if not, hopefully you have found the Facebook link and you can join us here on Facebook. Um, okay, there we go. There we go, so that's done. And now look at when I turn it a little bit, you can kind of see a bit of a shimmer when I'm putting it in the light a bit more. There's the, see that shimmer? Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, we're gonna take and close that up. The next one, so now I need to clean off this stamp. Now is when we bring in the blushing bride, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. <laughs> okay, we're going to clean off this stamp, wash and dry, sorry. Okay, next, blushing bride. Here's the blushing bride color. I knew I needed that dauber. So we're going to open that up. We're going to grab our dauber related to blushing bride. Oh, yeah, I don't need the dauber, Rachel. So are you. Just ink it up like this. <laughs> Pounce it up and down. I know, you guys, I'm so sorry that it froze on YouTube, and I have no button, no magical button to push here on my YouTube um, stuff to make it work. So um, not sure what to say, but um, Lisa is heading over to uh, Facebook, and maybe... Lisa, are you able to put like a link to the Facebook Live? I don't know. Oh, that's not the color we went on. <laughs> are you able to put a link to the Facebook Live there? Because now that it's live, there might be an actual link to it. That would be helpful for the viewers on YouTube. Um, Night of Navy is what we're doing next. So I have inked this up in Blushing Bride. And now I'm going to grab my Night of Navy um, dauber, which I haven't relabeled yet. I just have my old labels on there and I'm going to do the same thing. Why are you coloring it in pink and blue, Rachel? Well, do you guys know that when you look up crabs on Google on the internet, they do not look bright red. 
<laughs> the real ones do not look bright red. I believe it's when you cook them that they get brighter and brighter in color, right? Not all of them are bright red. Most of them have a very dull, earthy tone to them, and some even have like bluish tones in them and stuff like that. <sighs> Gonna breathe on that again and stamp it down. And there we go. So now we have a pinkish, bluish crab. Gonna do the same thing with the Wink of Stella so you can see the difference here. Some of them are even like just brown. I don't know. There are some crabs that are blue, by the way. So if you, um, yeah, if you Google them, you can make them all different colors. There's so many different colors of crabs out there. But yeah, hopefully this gives you a more realistic looking crab. And I am not coloring very neatly, just so you know. I'm just doing it fast. And hopefully you can see the shimmer. Can you see that shimmer on there? It's very pretty. Okay, we're going to um, set those ink pads aside and we're going to come over with a color called Sahara Sand. So Sahara Sand is now going to be used with sand. Ha! <laughs> okay, we have a sand stamp image in this stamp set. And I love how it's got a little arch to it because it kind of encircles the base of each of the crabs. So when I stamp it down, it looks like the sand is all around our crab. Isn't that fun? So we've got our two crabs done. Now we're going to do a totally different technique that you can do with your daubers. This is a little bit different. So I'm going to set these little pieces aside. I'm going to grab another scrap of basic white. We'll just use this one here that was our second square. And this time we're going to bring in a blending pen. We're, all, we're also going to keep our, our Wink of Stella in here. We're going to stamp, and I just want to make sure I'm doing it right, so I'm going to peek at my finished ones here. We're going to stamp the clam, so or the oyster. Oyster? Clam. I don't know. What is it, you guys? <laughs> We're stamping this one now. And Maryland crabs are blue. Thank you so much, Belish, for sharing that. Um, we're going to stamp this in black because we're going to do coloring in a different way. So I'm going to grab my Memento ink. I'm going to zoom out just a tad because we're really close. Thank you for joining on, um, on Facebook, you guys, those of you who... Yeah, it's frozen. Like I'm still working on paper over there on YouTube cutting the paper or something. I, don't, I was comparing envelopes, I think, is what it was. So we're going to stamp um, down our oyster. Oysters have pearls? Yeah. Or is it clams? <laughs> oh, I don't. I know this, you guys. It's a clam. Okay, thank you, Anita. <laughs> okay, so we're stamping that down. And I'm okay with it being a little faint. Um, I guess I grabbed my ink pad that's not as dark, but I'm okay with that because I don't want to have a lot of black on here anyways. I kind of wanted it to be a little less um, intense. And now I'm bringing in something called masking paper. So Stampin' Up! has this adhesive masking paper. It's kind of like a big giant, um, I don't know, post-it note, sticky note. Okay, the whole backing of it is sticky but removable. So we're going to grab a sheet out of here. Probably should have done that before because <laughs> they're all stuck together. There we go. All right, so here we have, and you can see that there's even like a separator between them. So if you can do your designs where there's the separation between it, it's easier to pull off the backing later on. I guess I'm not too worried about it. I don't have nail polish on, so I, hopefully I'll be able to separate the pieces. Now we're going to grab ink again, and it doesn't matter what color, but there is a pearl that goes with this um, this set of um, images and I've already got a scrap of my uh, my masking paper right here so I think I'm going to use oh we have to do it further away further away because we need some room for sponging so I've got it kind of with a border around it do you see what I'm doing here I'm making kind of it's got a place where I can sponge around it and it's um, it's not going to be affected too much. Oh, Rachel, you know what? 
I'm getting all of these mixed up. This card it doesn't matter on, but if I was going to sponge the pearl, then I'd have to be worried about the border. We're going back to this one, and you'll know what I mean when I talk about the bird later on. I'm going back to this one because this one has the little separator back there. It's going to be easier to pull off. So now I'm just going to trim around here. I think I'm thrown off by, once again, we're having technology glitches kind of thing. <laughs> Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry about the YouTube situation. Okay. There we go. So now I've cut out my pearl, and I'm going to go ahead and peel off the backing. See how easy that is when you do it on the separator part? <laughs> this is just going to get covered or put onto the pearl that's on the image already. So I'm covering up the pearl that is already on my image. So that image there is in case you want to do like a colored pearl, right? You could put some color in there and stamp it in something else. Stamp it in a pool party and that would give you uh, a pearl that looks like it's more white with a little shading to it. So now we've covered up that pearl there. We're going to do a different technique where we bring in our petal pink ink. So this is the other pink that they recommend in the papers. And I'm going to grab my dauber that is related to petal pink, and I'm just going to do a pouncing up and down. Okay. Um, YouTube, somebody said something about Facebook isn't working. Please don't tell me that. I hope it's working on Facebook. I don't seem to have any sound. Oh my gosh, you guys. Seriously, I'm going to keep going. Oh, wow. Um, go to Stamp Your Art Out. It's there in the live. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Hopefully it's just um, a couple individuals. Maybe, maybe technology is dying today. <laughs> All right. So, oh, oysters make pearls, not clams. Okay. Somebody else is saying oysters now. <laughs> Why didn't I educate myself on this before the live? Because I love to create and I don't think about the, um, you know, the technical stuff. I did look up that it's a sandpiper bird, though. Yay. All right. Facebook is running, says Deb. Okay. Thank you, you guys. So I've got the ink on here, and I'm going to pounce up and down right on top of the pearl that I already have. And it's not affecting the image underneath. Not at all, because we've covered it. So again, I'm pouncing up and down, and I'm putting my most intense color right here in the middle because I want that pink to be the darkest as it comes away from the pearl because that's where you have more shadow coming in. Plus, I want some white areas down here because I want it to look as if um, the animal <laughs> has some shininess to it. So I don't want everything pink. I'm also trying hard not to go outside the lines. It's a little bit harder to do that. And in the next one, I'm going to show you how to avoid that. Let's go underneath here and use just the edge of our dauber and do a little bit under the top shell just to get a little pink shading in there. And then we're going to use our blending pen, our blender pen, our blender pen with the color pool party. So here's our pool party. And for pool party, oops, what I wanted to do, sorry, is I wanted to use this bit of color here. And I got that by squeezing real hard the lid and the base together. And then I got that little spot of color. You can also just grab a clear block and you can take and like push into it. And now you've got your ink color on the clear block that you can grab from too. In fact, you know what, let's just do both. So you can see that you can grab ink from either one. So I'm grabbing ink from here and I can come in and I can color. So we're just adding a little bit of blueness to the shell here, here and there. And it doesn't matter. I mean, these things are multicolored, right? So it doesn't matter where it's going, just as long as you've got a little bit of color in there. I can grab it from here. And we just want, we just want some prettiness to it. Multicolored prettiness. Okay, so there is our animal. <laughs> clams make pearls too. Do they really? Oysters and clams? Okay. <sighs> I used to be a teacher, but you know what? I looked up things before I taught. I don't know what happened today. 
got the sandpiper, just not the other thing. So now we want to peel away, and Rachel's fingernails aren't working like she thought they were. So I'm going to grab my little snips here and try to get under there. There we go. We're going to peel away the sticky pearl on top and reveal our beautiful little pearl right there. Now, if you do not like the um, inkiness that's on the pearl, this one didn't turn out um, dark like it could have. But if you are inking up with a darker, darker sh um, pad, I'm going to put this one aside and I'm going to grab my other one and I'm going to show you. So this one's a little juicier. So now I'm going to ink this up and I'm going to stamp it off to this side over here just so you can see the difference. Oh, that's not the one. I had one that was super juicy. Okay, well let's say let's say this is the one that's super juicy because <laughs> it's darker. I'm going to ink it up and what you can do is you can take your blender pen now and you can eliminate some of that color. See, like that, you're just eliminating it, you're wiping it off so that that pearl, when stamped, will be a lot brighter looking because it won't have that dark shading going through it. You see that? It's like you're cleaning it. And I'm, I'm um, taking and rubbing my blender pen off every time just to make sure that I'm not going to bring that black back onto the surface of the stamp. Okay, now when I stamp it down, you can see that this is definitely not as dark as it could have been. Okay, and you can get it like totally clear if you want to. You can remove all the ink. All right, so on this one, I guess you could put the Wink of Stella anywhere. I, I put it just on my pearl in my finish card. So I just went over the pearl area just so it had a little bit of a, a sheen to it, okay? All right, the next one, and we'll just flip this over. The next one is gonna be using the black memento ink also, and we're gonna use the sandpiper bird. So we're gonna ink up our sandpiper. And if you ink it up with your darker of your two black pads, <laughs> hopefully it will get a nice dark color. And I wanna have this corner over here. I'm not gonna to worry too much about the tail, because it's going to get it's going to be get punched off anyways. So we've got our sandpiper stamped. Close this up. And now we're going to and I'm going to look at my finished card here. We're going to we're going to do something different with our masking paper. Oh yeah, we need to stamp it again. With our masking paper this time, we are going to where is my scrap one? Here it is. I don't think I have enough. I don't have enough of this because I want to have enough room around him where um, kind of um, protection, I guess we're going to call it. We're, we're going to have a protected area. So I'm going to stamp him about there so that he's got some room around here. Now I can go ahead and cut around him. And then I'm also going to do another one. And this one I can have closer because I'm going to go ahead and trim out the body. So I'm trimming the body from both, but I want to cut on the lines pretty, pretty good because um, I am making sure that it will mask in either direction if I want it to. This one I'm going to mask so that the um, inside bird is removed and the other one I want to remove the outside. So when you trim, do you notice what I'm doing with the scissors? I'm kind of moving the scissors back and forth just a little bit like that, but my left hand is doing the turning of the paper. That way I don't have to focus too hard. Oh, and we don't need the legs. We don't need the legs. The legs won't be affected. So again, just going around the body. And you know that the beak probably isn't affected either, so we'll just go ahead and cut right through that because the beak and the legs are both black. Now on this one, same thing. So we're going to cut around the body. And this time, 
I want the, um, I'm just going to grab a little bit of that beak because the beak has some white in it. This time I'm not worried about the cutting as much on the outside. I just want to make sure that I cut right up to the bird's edge pretty well. But if I go outside of it, it's okay. All right. So this one, we've got our birdie. And we're going to peel off the backing. I think I got it. And we're going to put that over the top of our stamped bird. So we're masking our bird. And you just want to line everything up like that. So the part that's underneath that mask is not going to get any ink on it. We're bringing in a color called Daffodil Delight. And grab my dauber for that. I'm going to pretend like this is sunshine. So um, I, I sort of want to have like the glow of, we're just going to pounce a little bit to get the ink off and then we're going to do a kind of a soft swirling motion. I want the glow to be behind the sandpiper's back, maybe a little bit past the head area. And there we go. Just a little bit of light swirling like that. So there's some sunshine behind the sandpiper. And then we're going to use the pool party ink. Got my hand in some ink here. Mmm, non-toxic. Okay, then we've got our pool party ink. <laughs> you guys do that too, you know it. Okay, pool party ink and we're going to do um, more towards the bottom. So swirling motion try not to get the look of a dauber like I don't want to have this look on there right I want to have just a soft gradual change of light to dark and we don't have to go past the feet because we're going to put sand underneath we're going to put sand underneath the sandpiper and then I want a little bit of blue kind of coming in from the top here just to give the sky a little bit of blue okay now we need our sand, so I'm going to grab that and let's put the cap on this one because I stuck my finger in it. And we're going to grab Sahara Sand ink, grab our sand. This time I'm going to turn it the other direction, okay, because I don't want the sand to be going upwards. So I'm turning it this way and I'm going to stamp right underneath and I'm actually going to stamp a little bit more like right over here. Just because when I punch, I know that that sand is going to appear in there. On this um, bird, oh, we got to first do the other coloring. So talking about the Wink of Stella already. So let's peel off the mask. And how nice is that? You get the nice crisp edge around the bird. Now here's the other mask we have. So for this one, we peel off the backing, backing, and backing. Okay. And we're going to come in and we're going to cover up, starting on one side. We're going to cover up the outside edge now. So we're masking that bird off so that you do not see. Oops, hang on. Any of the outside. See how that works? Pretty cool stuff, you guys. If you don't have masking paper and you're not using it, then maybe you forgot, but hopefully you can use it now. So now we want to come in with a little bit of color on our bird, and I'm going to go to the Sahara Sand color. So I've got Sahara Sand, and I'm going to bring back my Sahara Sand ink. And we're going to come just down from the top. And I want a gradual um, brown to white wing. So I'm going to come down from the top and just kind of swirl like that to give a soft look get a little bit on the tail and then I also want to come up a little bit towards the head get a little bit on the head there see and that's all we needed to do for him and watch what happens oh you guys he's a realistic looking one it's so cool be careful when you peel off your masking paper because it can stick really strong, strongly. 
Um, the only other tip I have for the sandpiper is that if your ink is not black enough after you have done your stamping and all that, you can come back in with a little bit more darkness to the eyes and little bits of the wings. Because if you look up the sandpiper, you will notice that those areas, little flecks on the wings and the eyes are super, super dark. Okay. What's the next step? The next step is to punch out our images. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wink of Stella. On the bird here, I didn't actually put it on the bird. I put it off to the side in the sky area. And I went kind of like little streaks that were just kind of going straight out to the right and then straight out to the left. Mainly where the sun is. Now we'll take a peek at that and you can see there. So the sun is more glitzy and glowy. Two inch circle punch, you guys, it's back. It's in the online exclusives. So we're just gonna come and insert our image of our animal. See how the tail gets cut off? Punch them out. Do the same thing with our clam or oyster. <laughs> and actually the back part of it kind of gets cut off. Do the same thing with our, where did they go? They're here somewhere. <laughs> messy desk, messy desk alert. Um, the other two, you know, the, the crab guy. Okay, let's put our card together. I will find it eventually. <laughs> There's opening pads here, you guys, it's scary. It's a scary desk. Um, yeah, don't know where I put them, but we're gonna put together a card. They're here somewhere. <laughs> Maybe they fell on the floor. All right, so for putting the card together, you have those score marks that we made initially. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. You're gonna have your wide, narrow, wide, wide. All right. Oh, I gotta zoom out a bit. So your narrow one is the one that's going to be the second one from the outside. So this section is two and a quarter. This section is one and three quarters. And that's going to fold that way. And then this one is going to fold the opposite way than what you'd think. You'd think it would go like this, you know, to zigzag back and forth, but it is going this way. Never leave a crab un unattended, says Deborah. Tell us your story. Now we need to know. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna fold and crease with a bone folder on all of these sections here, like that. And we'll do the same thing to the other side so that when you're done, you have two pieces, and I'll just put these aside here, two pieces that look like this. Okay, <laughs> sorry for the messy grid paper. So you've got two pieces that look like this. This is going to be the top surface of your card. The part that folded back in the other direction is actually gonna be the front of your card. These are gonna be the wings of the bird. So now if I extend them, this is where it came up with, this is the seagull fold, this flying seagull fold. Do you see that? So we're going to go ahead and adhere our center square to this section. And that's going to give us our fun fold card, which looks like this when flattened. I know, right? Pretty cool. So what you want to do is you want to take your um, glue, your multi-purpose liquid glue, which I've transferred into my little fine tip precision bottle. And we're gonna put our glue on this panel here. And we're going to connect these two pieces. And because I did it just under the eight and three eighths, it should work if all the other cutting is good by bringing it right up to that edge, okay? Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> 
Okay, and now we're going to put adhesive on this one. So let's just flip these around because I'm right-handed. And I'm going to put adhesive over here. And we're going to connect this, this other half here. See, the other half hasn't been glued yet. We're going to connect the other half to that side. And it should all line up. There we go. It's all lining up. Yay! It worked. It worked. You can press it down. You'll see about an eighth of an inch before this fold begins over here and an eighth of an inch on that side before the fold begins. That's okay because it's not supposed to be flush in there. And then if you flip it over, you're going to see that there's a little channel there where they didn't quite connect, which is good. You don't want to have them quite connecting all the way or that means um, there might be some overlap, a risk of overlap. But yeah, if they're connecting, that's good too. That means you did it really perfectly. It's snowing again in Minnesota, says Bay. I didn't know that. I have my window closed. Oh my gosh, seriously? <sighs> Will the ink refills? That was a good question. Let me check it here. Will the ink refills for the old ink pads work with the new pads? I would stay away from doing that with certain colors. Now, this was a long time ago when they had um, um, the inks change they cautioned on certain colors so i would encourage you to um either look that up google it and see what was recommended years ago for the new color changes and the new ink pads what colors should not have you you know what re-inkers you shouldn't have used it was only a select few but um yeah but otherwise just you know maybe get a new refill for your new pad right or you don't have a new pad you have an old pad you have an old pad yeah, then maybe risk it, because if it doesn't work, <laughs> then you can just toss out the pad and get a new, because you can't really get old ink refills anymore, right? Okay, so this is our card. This is the way it looks when it is closed and when it's open. We're going to start decorating it with panels. We have these pieces here that we didn't emboss yet, but I told you we were going to emboss them, and I'm not going to do it on camera, but there are some coordinating products that kind of go along with the suite that I wanted to point out. We have um, the splatters um, embossing folder in the stripes and splatters combo. So this one here is really fun to do with water type of imagery. We also have this one, which is called Seashells 3D embossing folder. And that gives you um, a fun look as well. And then I wanted to point this out, even though I did not need this for this particular project, but I just heard about this, um, that this shell here, when lined up with uh, this image from the paper, it can cut out some of your larger shells from the designer paper. And it comes from a totally different pack of dies. It comes from the chic dies. So if you have the chic dies, you can die cut some of those little guys, those little shells. So let's say I've already embossed these. I'm gonna grab the finished embossed ones. Those are right here, I didn't lose them. So these are the finished embossed ones. You can see I've got um, embossing halfway up on the soft succulent pieces and all the way through on these. So for doing that with your embossing folder, you can actually fit two of these inside like this. You can fit them side by side and run it through and emboss them. For this one here, what I did is I took and placed them, make sure I do this right here. I placed them here and here, yeah. So I just placed them kind of as if they were coming out of the lower portion. And then when I put them onto my mat, because you need to sandwich them between the platform and the 3D mat here. So when I put them on here, I did it so that this was hanging off the edge a bit, and this was allowing it to hang off the edge a bit too. So it wasn't completely covering it. And then I didn't get um, a little line going through there where this edge of the embossing folder is. So we've got those embossed. Let's put together our 
<laughs> I will find here it is. I found it. Yay, because this is the one we were going to put together. Um, here's our, our little crabs. Let's grab this guy here. <laughs> Phew! I was starting to sweat, you guys. I needed that guy. Okay, so our finished one is... We're just going to grab our seal for quickness. Put some adhesive around the back sides here. And I'm going to lay that on top in this direction here. This is going to be top and bottom of the card. Okay. And then this strip right here goes across the middle. And you may want to bring in the little side flaps here. And just use your grid paper, uh, the lines on your grid paper, to kind of line up where the strip is going to kind of go across. And then you can eyeball this way. I put it up maybe a little higher than three quarters of an inch, but it's up to you, you know, just so that you're making it straight. So I'm eyeballing this dark line and this dark line and trying to make sure that bottom edge is lined up with that. This one is going to be put up on dimensionals, which are on my desk somewhere. Here they are. So I just put three on the back side. One, two, three. Peeled off the backings and stuck that down. So our crab was kind of like turned a little bit and about an eighth of an inch from the bottom here. And then I took our new twine, which uh, our trim combo pack, sorry, it's not twine. It's our trim combo pack that is available in the online exclusives. We have silver and gold. And I grabbed a gold one, about five inches of it, turned it into a little bow, trimmed off the ends. And then I used my glue dots, here they are, on the back side, rolled up a bit, and stuck that under here. Okay, we have a front panel done. Now we can add the sides. For the sides, you can take and add either one of them. Um, I actually like the shell design on um, with the with the with the crabs, but I think I did it in the wrong color. I should have done this in the gold. So I'm going to leave that blank, and I'll just show you the finished ones. And then this one goes with that paper, right? So then you just take and place these on the outer panels like that. Oh, I'm way too high. And like that. Some of you are probably saying, where do you sign this card? And then these guys would get put here. So here are your options. You can sign your card here. You can sign your card here. You have plenty of white space. Or you can flip it over and you could put like another um, you know, sentiment back here somewhere, here or here, and you can sign it on either one of those sections. You have plenty of white space. Let me show you the finished cards. Okay, so this is what it should have looked like. <laughs> I just, yeah, and I did the all the shells this time. I went all the way through and embossed the whole entire shell design with the embossing folder on that one. This is my red crab one that I did with the half shell on the shimmer paper. And let's just go like that so you can see them better. And then here is the oyster or clam <laughs> with a pearl. And the last one is this one here, a little sandpiper guy surrounded by all the fish. Susan Canfield, again, thank you so much for this idea for the fun fold. We're loving it, I can tell. I'm already excited to try other options with it. Here is the non-completely finished card. We'll just stick that in the upper corner so you can see everything kind of all at once. Um, again, that PDF that has the measurements, some photos, um, the supply list, the date, and the name is going to be available in my blog post. And that will be um, that will be shared at 3 p.m. Central Time today, along with a blog hop sharing other fun ideas with the By the Bay suite. Uh, other news that I want to tell you about, and we're going to do prizes. Um, 
I do have a link, by the way, to Susan's blog and to the Country Hives website for that dauber holder. Uh, I think that's it. So the All-Star Group, we offer a tutorial that is exclusive, um, a video class bundle, I should call it, um, that's exclusive every month. And this month it features this By the Bay suite. I'm going to quickly bring you over to my blog. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Hang on. Hitting too many things here. Okay. So I'm going to bring you over to my blog. I thought I had logged out. You get to see this nice little dark panel up here at the top. Um, on my blog, if you um, scroll down and then you kind of go through and you click older entries here, you won't have to do that today but because um, it will link you to this one. But March 1st or the first of every month allows you access to getting peaks to our exclusive video tutorial bundle. This is the project that I did here for the video tutorial bundle. And I'll just give you a hint. It's a great gift for guests coming to stay with you. Um, lots of gorgeous stuff. You can see the names of the other demonstrators that I do this with. And it's a monthly offering. You can earn it by purchasing. So you can go to my blog and you can shop for products. And if your order is at least $50, or more then you get that tutorial sent to you for free. Um, if you want to, you can just purchase it. Also, you can go to the shop tab on my blog and you can go down to, where is it? Tutorials. You can click over the tutorial section and it will bring up my little store where you can purchase any of those um, little video class bundles, tutorials. There's a bunch of them. Um, there's pages so you can actually go page two you can see there's just endless amounts so if you're interested in any of that feel free to shop um, they're $15 in the US now for our prize today we are going to be offering that as the prize so if your name is drawn by Lisa if you're the two winners during the live and your name is drawn you get to have the video tutorial um, bundle for free and if you already have this one you could pick a past one um, for our winners from last week's after live comments you have paper pumpkin kit kits that you can choose from um, basically if your name is drawn right now I want you to tell me you know email me here's my email by the way email me and let me know which past paper pumpkin you would like to get as your gift the box is not going to be included but the um the um uh sorry i'm switching cameras here but the um the rest of it will okay now i'm coming over here again one more time because if you don't know if you're a prize winner and you don't know what paper pumpkin kit to pick click on um paper pumpkin um let's see recent or old, actually go to older and just kind of scroll through some of the the blog posts and see if there's anything that floats your boat. You can see like I've got ideas from all past paper pumpkin kits in here. You can also if a visual a quick visual helps you can go to the inserts section of my website and you can scroll and you can go by the stamp set image if that helps. But yeah, just give me a list of a few and I'll see if I have it if you're the prize winner. So our prize winners. Now that we have our screen up YouTube after live comments. Shirley Eckenrod, Eckenrod, you won. Um, you were the winner from YouTube. And from Facebook, we have Susan Rushton. So congratulations. Thank you so much for being an after live commenter from last week's video. And now I'm going to go back to um, my stream here. And I'm going to see if we had Lisa chime in with other names. So Lisa is going to pick a couple winners for us and hopefully I will catch her comment and I will hopefully highlight it. But if she calls out your name, um, then I will make sure that I um, somehow reach out to you. I don't know how. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Let's see here. OK, so anyways, when she picks your name, um, the comment is going to be um, include. I'm kind of distracted because of all the technology issues we're having. And on Facebook, it's so different um because i have to scroll through the comments here because i can't see them on my computer so you know what if you guys if you guys see um her comment 
Call out the names in your comments too, because I'm not seeing the comments. I see Darlene and Sue. Darlene and Sue. Okay, Darlene and Sue. Well, hopefully you were tagged um, by Lisa. Darlene and Sue, congratulations to you. I'm trying to get your names up, but I cannot find the post where it was. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But if your name is Darlene or Sue, join my uh, blog post later on at 3 p.m. today. And hopefully that um, you'll be able to see, scroll to the bottom, you'll be able to see if that was your full name. Because the winners are listed in my blog posts too. I'm going to let you guys all go. Um, take care. Sorry for all the technical issues we had today. It was crazy. And I'm going to go home and or get off this live and just take a very deep breath and try to figure out what went wrong again. <laughs> but thanks, everybody. Take care. And we will see you next week on March 15th at 11 a.m. Central Time. Bye-bye.